In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can estimate the time it's going to take us to travel a distance of a leg. So, for example, the leg I've just measured is 2 kilometres and 50 metres, and I've used that, I measured that just using the piece of paper here. So, what we're going to do is for now, we're just going to get rid of the map. We'll have a look at that later on, but we are going to have a look at this thing here called Naismith's Room. Naismith was a chap who estimated the speed that you walk and the distance that you walk. And he's basically had this table to say that if you're working at four kilometres an hour and you're going to go 600 metres, it's going to take you nine minutes. And so rather than having to estimate it each time, you've got this little table. What you might find is that your assessor or instructor has a little version for you, but you don't normally need to take these on expedition, so you don't need that. But you might have a bigger version, something like this. So, let's imagine that our expedition, we are estimating that we're going to walk at 4 kilometres an hour. So, 4 kph, and we know that we the first part of the leg is 2 kilometres. So, at 4 kilometres, we've come down here. 1 kilometre is 15 minutes, so 15 minutes, no seconds. So, that means that 2 kilometres is going to be 30 minutes. And then, the 50 metres here, we can go back up the top. 50 meters is going to be 45 seconds. If it was something like 75 meters, you can either go halfway, you can add half of that again, so half of your 50, or you can just round it up or round it down. It's up to you. In terms of the 45 seconds, I would round up, so maybe say 31 minutes. If you want to be really precise, you can, and then you know that if you're on track for that day, so if you've estimated that you've got to start your expedition, you've got to start walking at 9 o'clock in the morning in order to get to your camp for 4 p.m., then you know that if you've got the end of the sixth leg, you know you're on time. So you can either say, we need to slow down, or we can speed up, or we can have a longer break. Or if there's something of interest on your route, you can spend a little bit more time doing that. So with this, the distance and the speed we travel means that we've got a quite an accurate estimation. The only thing that it doesn't take account of is any ascent we've done so any climbing uh, and the way we're going to do that is use this little thing at the bottom here so what it says is our overall time we add one minute for every contour line that we cross because climbing takes a little bit longer than walking on the flat so every contour line equates to 10 meters so what we need to do then is go back to the map back to the leg we stack it here for b kills and the route of this leg for example takes us this way around here down this track and back to the spring where the track crosses this fence line. So all we need to do is very quickly have a look back at the map. We started here, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we've, in total we've ascended 13 because on top of this mirror here and then it's relatively flat and it starts to descend. So that's 13 contours worth of ascent. Now we do have some descent here where we're going down. We've got one contour line, another 200 metres, we've got another contour line. However, it's quite a shallow descent. If it was going to be a steep descent, then we might want to add some time onto that. But that's quite shallow, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's go back to our calculation. Initially, the distance, if 4 kilometres an hour, was going to take 30 minutes 45 seconds. We know that we need to add 13, because we're going to cross 13 contour lines. Therefore, that's going to be 43, 45. So that'll be 43 minutes, 45 seconds for that leg. So on our route card now, we can add that in there.